you a body of work so you can understand. Let me go to trap so he can teach me. Let me go to trap so I can understand. The reason why we can't effectively dominate the market is because we don't truly understand what's going on in the market. And we don't understand what's going on in the market. How can we function inside of the chaos? So watch this. So if I'm not mistaken, 42.18 was our first level. That's what, that's what we eyeballed last week, right? 42.18 was our first level. And then 42.02 was our next level historically. Now the thing was, the issue was, I think we got to 42.24. I think that's what we got to. We got to 42.24. This was our level. We got to 42.24. That was our level. Now, the thing was, if we passed up 42.18, our next level was 42.02. The problem with that is, if we would have got down to 40, if once we break this, we know we're in trouble. Once we break this, we know we're in trouble because now everywhere between here is chaos. Everything between here is chaos. Why is that chaos? Because the range between 4218 and 4202 is now becomes unfamiliar territory Back to January. You feel me? Yep, all the same neighborhood, 100%. So anything between 4218, if once we break 4218, the next support level is here. So everything here means everything that means blood. Everything between that means blood. The crazy part is to get here, we, we don't want to drop that because we already established that 4202 erase all S and P gains for the year. So we know that all gains, once we hit this number, once we hit this number at 4202, we erase all gains. Now, somebody came in the chat and said 39. I said, bro, we definitely don't want to see a 39. But I'm going to say this, though. I will say this. 4202 is still possible. 4202 is still possible. It came to 4219, so we was real close to it. It came to 4219. We was real close to it. Same neighborhood. Now, the thing is, we had a rally Thursday. We had a rally Friday. We had a rally Monday. Thank you, beloved. Shout out to my love, Nat, man. Appreciate that super chat. She been so consistent with us, yo. I ain't going to lie. She been so consistent with us. Right? So 42, and if you don't know what this is, this is called basis points, y'all. Let me, let me backtrack a little bit. To all my new trappers who, who don't really know what these numbers is. So if you look on side the S&P 500, if you look on side the NASDAQ, if you look on side the Dow, you'll see numbers. Those numbers are called basis points. These basis points right here are the basis points of the S&P 500. Why do we use the S&P 500? Because those are the 500 biggest, they call the S&P 500 the big board. So the Dow has the 30, the uh, NASDAQ has 100, but it's really a little more than 100. It's 105. And the S&P has a little bit more than 500, but these 500 are the big boys. So they call this the big board. All right, so they call the S&P 500 the big board. So the points on side of the S&P 500, those basis points leave a footprint. Okay, let me, let me, listen, to all my people that's been trapping for a while, this segment may not be for you. All right, 
So for all my people that have been trapping for a little while, this segment right here may not, this may not be for you. But let's take a minute. Let's take a minute to bring, I told y'all, we move as a unit. So let's bring everybody up to par so they can know what they're looking at. You feel me? Okay, so watch this. So if you look on the stock market, you'll see this, the Dow. And then you'll say 33739. And then you'll see S&P 4358. And then you'll see NASDAQ 13562. All right? So... What happens is this. These three are called indexes. Together, they are called indices, right? So for this one, you got 100. For this one, you got 500. For this one, you got 30, right? You got 30 companies, 30 companies, 500 companies, and then you got 100, right? Now, as these 30 stocks move up and down, it causes these basis points to move. So if these 30 stocks as a unit, so they move as a unit, right? So some are up, some are down, and the combination of them causes it to move a certain way. Now, the difference in that is this. These 30 stocks, now you got to look inside of them and see who has the biggest weight in each one of them. So it's Apple. They all weighted different, right? Some of them by price, some of them by market cap, right? This one is by price, this is by market cap. So watch me here. So depending on how these 30 stocks move, meaning who's buying, who's selling, as a collective, every second, they, that, that index is moving up or down. Every second, that index is moving up or down. So as a whole, if this 30 stocks together go up in price, that causes these basis points to move. We trapping or we trapping right now? Everybody understand what we're going on right now? What's good, trappers, man? It's your boy, the Wall Street Trapper. Right now, I want to invite you to an amazing experience full of value. That is my community, Trappers Anonymous. It's 100% the greatest fundamental investing community on the market. Listen, your portfolio should be a masterpiece. And the only way we get you there is if we help you to learn how to invest with confidence. Now listen, I get it. Like you don't know a lot about stocks or maybe you've heard people say how much money they lost in stocks, but I can guarantee you one, because they weren't in the community and two, they lack the information. Our goal in Travis Anonymous is to help you, really to hold your hand on the journey to becoming a confident investor, learning how to navigate through the different events that the stock market goes through to take you from panic to encouragement. There's no better time than now. This is an opportunity only for those who are willing to be on the journey. So listen, man, click the link below. Come join me in Travis Anonymous, man. I will see you in one of our many classes, whether it's Moat Monday, whether it's the two hour class we do on Sunday or whether it's just a book club, everything is geared toward making you a better investor so you can triple your network and turn your last name to an asset. It's your boy Wall Street Traveler. See you in a trap. So watch this. If these stock prices inside these 30, there's, there's technology that measures if this index is going up or down based on the buying and selling. So if there's buys and sells of stocks, if enough people are buying, then the 30 stocks in here go up. If enough people are selling, it goes down. If they at a standstill, they'll say it's flat. Now, when they say the Dow has lost 300 points, that means there's... Ooh, this is good. When they say the Dow has lost 300 points, what they're saying is the sellers are winning. And so now if the Dow lose 300 points, 
That means this now goes to 33, what that is, 439. If that happens, then the dial is now down. I mean, the dial is down. So if they say the S&P is 50 points, 50, and they'll always say this word, basis points. I'm going to give y'all some homework tonight. I'm going to give y'all some homework tonight. Ooh, this is good homework. Khadijah know this homework. This is good homework. Tonight, to help you understand the market a little bit more, I need you to go figure out how many basis points equal 1%. It's about to be good. This is good. This is good. So your homework tonight, because my goal is to help you understand how to play this game. My goal is to help you understand how to play this game and how to play the game well. Right? I'm not talking about an ETF. I'm talking about an index. Your goal is to go understand how many basis points equal 1%? I'm talking about the whole exchange. Talking about the whole Dow, the whole S&P, the whole NASDAQ. Talking about the whole exchange. I'm not talking about an index. I'm not talking about one ETF. I'm talking about an entire exchange. So when they tell you that the, the Dow Jones has lost 400 point, basis points, you can say, okay, well, that is such and such percent. I'm okay. Now, here's what happens. A 400-point move down on the dial doesn't mean the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ is down. 400 basis points don't equal 4% on the NASDAQ. I mean, on the Dow Jones. Here's what I need you to understand. I'm glad I said that like that. Watch this. Because every index is weighted differently, a 400-point move, a 400-basis point move here doesn't equate to the same thing as a 400 move here. Because watch this. 400, 400 basis points in the S&P, you got a problem. If the S&P loses 400 points... In a day? If the S&P loses 200 points in a day, we got a problem. So we talking about in one day. If the S&P lose 200 points in one day, you got a problem. You got a serious problem. But you, the Dow can lose 400, 200 points, 300 points in a day, and it don't even be, it'd be like, all right, the Dow is down 200 points. I bet. So once you go learn what, this your, I need y'all to let me get the homework out. Once you go learn what the basis points is percent-wise, now you need to go learn how every index is weighed. Because they all weigh different. They all move different. You might hear the S&P has lost 0.67%, but that thing bloody. That thing lose the S and watch this. The S and P can lose one percent and it be it's bloody. But the Dow can drop three hundred points and you'd be like, I right, bet. You gotta remember. You gotta remember. These numbers are drastically different. The basis points are drastically different. The stocks that's in each one is drastically different. Now, just to give you some context, Jose, you like this? Just, just, just to give you some context. Yep, you got the Russell 2, so let me just add that because people are asking about it. Got the Russell 2000. All right, so this is the small caps. All right, so now let me give you context. I like to give context what we're doing here. Well, this is good, bro. This is good, bro. Somebody online trying to sell them this for 1997, bro. You feel me? This is good. All right, so watch this. The Dow Jones represents 30, watch this, of your more industrials. 
So even you, your John Deere, your caterpillars, you know, that's what's over here. The old, these, they say that these represent the actual, like, economy, right? Industrial economy, right? The S&P is a mixture of the 500 biggest companies, right? Your 500, this the best. This is why you see some companies, when they go public, they may start off somewhere, but their goal is to get on the S&P or the net. They be like, yo, they just entered the NASDAQ. We got rid of them to put them here. <laughs> All right, watch this. And then you got the NASDAQ. So this represents mostly technology stocks. Now, it is 89% technology and the other, what, 11% is a mixture of some other stuff. Banking, finances, you got some other stuff in there. It is about 89% technology. That's why when you see Apple, Google, Microsoft, NVIDIA, when you see all the tech stocks running, you're going to see three things that's going to go crazy. Q, 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 X, L, K. That's what you're going to see go crazy. You're going to see that go crazy. So when you see this going crazy, you can always partner them two with it. Ooh, we cooking. Ooh. We cooking right now. We cooking right now. So when you see this going crazy, you can almost bet that this going crazy and probably, now I'm going to tell you something. SMH. Oh, so when you see QQQ, XLK, when you see the NASDAQ going crazy, you can bet them two going crazy. Now let me help you out, though. If you see NVIDIA, watch this. If you see NVIDIA, AMD, and Broadcom doing good, then you also know that SMA is going crazy, too. Yo, I'm giving This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. This is crazy. Khadija, yep, I drink. Khadija should know this like the back of her hand. Right? So I'm giving you an idea. So if you see QQQ, XLK doing good, then you probably know the NASDAQ doing good because they represent the technology. If you see NVIDIA, AMD, and AVGO doing good, you probably already understand that SMH is doing good and also XOL is doing probably good too. SOXL. Probably doing good, too. Not so much TSMC. They don't really be moving too much. Right? Now, I'm going to tell you something. Apple is a dragger. Apple is a dragger. The reason why Apple is a dragger is because it's so big it drags this and this, but it doesn't necessarily drag the NASDAQ. And the reason why I don't drag the NASDAQ is because you also have Microsoft pushing. You also have, you have so many other pushers inside of there to where it doesn't drag it as much. But I will say this. Anytime you see this, anytime you see both of them down, it's a good chance they're going to drag the market together. Because these the biggest. Anytime them two down, it's a good chance that one of those indexes are down together. So y'all homework, before we get back to what we're doing, you got to go figure out what one basis point equal. And once you figure out what one's basis point equal, you got to figure out how that equates to each index. So now when they tell you the Dow Jones is down 400%, you, I mean, 400, 400%, Jesus Christ, 400%, let's all go inside. <laughs> Grab the guns, they shoot, 400%, <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Ain't no more market. <laughs> you feel me? But the market, 400 basis points, 
You need to know how many, if 400 basis points, what does 400 basis points equal a move in the Dow? What does a 1% equal move basis points in the NASDAQ? What does 1% mean inside of the S&P 500? I, all my, all my, all my, all my advanced people, y'all already knew it, but all of my new people, we just gave you an amazing idea, we gave you an amazing concept on how to play this game. For me, it's all about teaching you not just how to buy stocks, but we need to, again, we're not just on a rudimentary level here, right? And the goal is to bring everybody up to par so we all can see the game and understand, oh, 200 points, I don't got to panic. That's not even, you know what I'm saying? 200 points on the dial, I bet. That ain't 1%. I, uh, 1% on the S&P is... So if you understand how these basis points and these percents move, now you understand, you can gauge how the market is moving. All right, let's go.